Hi, welcome to Seaside Quilting Tutorials. My name is Terry, and today we're going to make um, an eyeglass case. They're really handy to have to throw in your tote bag or your purse or even to keep one in your vehicle. For me, I have to wear my glasses all the time, so I don't use one very often. But I do like to keep one in my vehicle for when I go to the movies or whatever, and I can't use my glasses when I'm in the theater. It's too big of a picture. <laughs> But they're really handy to have. Um, so let's take a look at how we're going to make one. I'm using the Robert Kaufman glasses case pattern. And we're going to be making the fold over ones today. So let me move you over to the ironing board. Now, I've already cut out all my fabrics. They give you a template um, for each section. And you're going to use your template and you're going to cut out your fabric for the outside of the case and in honor of Dr. Seuss, whose birthday was, I believe, on the third of this month, I decided I would use some of the Robert Kaufman Seuss fabric. And I'm using this cute bright yellow batik to go with it for the inside of the case. And you will need also a fusible fleece, uh, fleece <laughs> to go um, to sturdy it up. Now, what I did was this had the template had um, a, a darker um, quarter of an inch line that went around. So what I did first was I cut out my fabrics according to that line. And then your fusible fleece needed to be cut out on the dotted line. So I cut that out after I cut the fabrics out. And so you need one piece of each of your fabrics, your outer fabric, your inner fabric, and then one each of your fusible fleece. Okay, we'll set the templates aside. So you're just going to line up your fleece and you want to make sure your fusible side is down. Now, mine is, all I had on hand was um, a two-sided fusible uh, fleece. So I'm going to line my pieces up and then I'm going to flip them over onto my Amplifuse mat. Um, that way I don't fuse it to my ironing board. And I figure once this all gets put together um, and flipped around and all that, um, I can press it and then it will sturdy up both sides together. So I figure, what the heck, I'll just use the double-sided. I'm not worried about it. So you just want to center that piece of fusible fleece. And if you have the one-sided, you'll feel like some bubbles on one side. Those bubbles are your glue. So make sure that you have that down on the wrong side of your fabric. And we're going to do that on both pieces. And just line it up the best that you can on there. And then I'm just going to hold on to this and flip it over. And I can kind of see my fleece through the fabric, which is nice. So I can make sure I still have that lined up properly. And I'm going to do the same with the other piece. And just check that. And then you're just going to press for about five seconds on each section. Don't iron back and forth. 
you don't want to shift your fabric um, in this process you just want to get everything adhered properly and it doesn't take too long to get that fleece onto your inside of your fabric and this is the first time that I've made a um, glasses case this way I usually make the other kind where it just the fabric folds over and the glasses slide into the sleeve so I thought this would be interesting to do a different kind And I have to hide my glasses anytime I do take them off for my cat because uh, she's a little mischievous. She isn't quite a year old yet. And one day she ended up taking my glasses and carried them off and decided that they were a toy. So now I have to, anytime I do take them off to sleep or whatever, I have to put them into a case to make sure that she doesn't sneak off with them. Now this bubbled up a little bit on me. If that happens to you, just go ahead and smooth it out with your iron. While the fabric is hot, the glue in there will still be sticky. So it, it you can, I don't know if you can catch it on camera, but it was bubbled up a lot more. I am going to smooth it across just to get those well, I don't I wouldn't say it was bubbles but it was all puckered up on me probably had my heat just a little too high I'll turn it down just a little bit I am going to smooth that out some. If that happens to you, just smooth it out. Once it cools down, that's when your glue sets. So anything that you need to do to your fusible, you want to do it now. And at this point, I've even had times where I've had a problem and you could peel this back and, and shift it. And lay it back down while it's still warm because the glue's not completely set yet. But once it gets cooled down, then your glue sets and it becomes a problem. So, and it's just a little bit the same on this one. There, I got those out of there so it's nice and flat. And that's what we want. And you just double check it to make sure that all your all your sides fused real well. And they definitely did, which is good. Okay, so now we're going to take our pieces and we're going to go over to the sewing machine. So I'll have you join me over there. Okay, so now we're over at the sewing machine. And I've got my pieces all ready. And it says to take, now with a directional fabric, before I go any further, <coughs> excuse me, with a directional fabric, I was doing a little bit of thinking about this because this is going to fold over. And I think that it would look a little silly with the elephant's feet to be sticking upside down. So for me, I decided that I'm going to let the back be upside down so that when I fold this over, the elephant will be upside right. So you can make your own decision on that, how you want that to go. Um, I'm not so worried, I guess, about the back because however you lay it down, um, but I just thought it would look kind of silly if it folded over and everything was upside down. And 
So it kind of depends on the fabric that you're using and I'll just let you figure that out how you want to do it. That's how I'm going to do it. And then this piece will be in the front. So it will kind of be folded over like this. So I think that will be cuter than if everything was upside down for me. So that's how I'm going to do it. So I'm just going to turn this piece over. So it looks upside down to me like this. And this side, when I lay it over, is going to look upside right. And you're going to put your right sides together for this. I'm just going to trim a little bit because I can see that one is just a little bit bigger than the other. I failed my cutting 101, apparently. So I'm just going to trim it up just a little bit so that when I go to sew, it matches up. Trash can. I had it stuck open with my long arm yesterday. As apparently I'm going to need that. Okay. So now the instructions say that we're supposed to sew this a quarter of an inch from the top of this piece around all the way over to the other side and when you get to your corners you're just going to want to slow down and you might have to pivot a little bit as you go to get that corner and so one of the things that we're going to do let me see i'm going to get my machine going here into the right stitches we're going to be doing a quarter of an inch seam and we're going to put our stitches at 2.0. Uh, just helps to keep the stitches a little more secure, uh, tighter for the piece that we're making. And I'm going to be using my quarter of an inch guide foot. I just like it better. I know that when my needle lines up with that red mark on this foot that I'm at a quarter of an inch and I have a guide on the side for my fabric to go up against so I know that I'm staying at a quarter of an inch and I just find this handy. I really highly recommend that, get this up in the camera, I really recommend this foot if your machine is capable of using one. Um, it's worth the investment. You will use it time and time and time again, whether you're sewing or you're quilting, and especially if you're quilting, this foot comes in so handy and makes life so much simpler. And to me, my tools are important, and anything that saves me time and headache, that's what I like. If your machine doesn't use that type of a foot, say it's not available. It depends on your machine. I don't know a lot about um, some of the older machines, what was capable to have for different feet. Um, I've never had one of the older, older machines. Uh, my first machine that I bought for myself was, oh, back in the 80s, I think. And my stepmother who taught me to sew she had an older singer and I remember needing to adjust the tension and stuff on it but she was more of a seamstress uh, I don't remember her making quilts she may have but I don't re recall it 
um, but mostly making clothes and stuff for the kids. So I don't recall if she had a foot like this or not. If you only have your regular, you know, zigzag feet and straight stitch feet, it is handy to have one of these magnets that can go on the bed of your machine and you can line it up. You just want to make sure your foot's not going to hit it. Um, but you can line this up for some measurements. Now for the quarter inch, I'm going to be in too much. I do have, let me see, your typical quarter of an inch foot that comes with many machines is one of the uh, feet that you can use. So let's see if that magnet would you work with this foot. This is the quarter of an inch foot. And nope, it wouldn't work for that. So if you use your, I was thinking that might be an option, but that's more of an option when you're, when you have a seam more out. But a lot of machines, if they don't have the capability of using the, quarter inch guide foot that's usually an additional foot to purchase anyways um, but most machines come with a certain amount of feet with them and most come with your quarter inch guide foot and you just have to see you know you just follow your quarter of an inch on your plate and use this and this is a straight stitch foot so you'll be able to see where to guide it from there. And I think that there's some tape that you can put down on your machine, or you could use a painter's tape and line up the painter's tape, take a ruler, put it up against where your quarter inch mark is, and a ruler and lay your tape down so it stays straight and that would help guide you, you know, if you need a little bit of an extra guide. Whatever works best for you. For me, it's the quarter inch guide foot. And I just need to thread my needle. And I should be all set to go. And I'm wondering if I have the right needle in. I think I do. I had to change out my needle the other day because I was doing a project and I needed a denim needle in and I was just checking to make sure that I took that out. And your machine will be set for woven medium for this project. If you have a machine that you need to tell it what fabric you're using. And the reason why that's handy, now the older machines I know had a bottom tension uh, um, adjustment and a top tension adjustment. And so you would, you, in a pressure, how much pressure your foot will put down on it. With newer machines, um, or electronical machines I should say, we're usually able to you know, just adjust a button, you know, tell our machine what we want it to do. Um, some of the manual machines that have still have the knobs, because they, there's still many of those out there, you usually have some area on your machine that you can adjust to tell your machine what type of fabric you're going to be sewing through. And the reason why that's important is because say I was uh, sewing with denim, then you would want to let your machine know that because it knows how much pressure to put down on your fabric to move it over your feed dogs. And where we're just using regular cotton for this project, and you could, you could, if you wanted, you could use um, a flannel for the inside of your glasses case. If you want something a little softer, um, a flannel would be very nice. You could make the whole thing out of flannel even. Uh, so just some options to think about as you're making your project. 
and I'm sorry if that was an overload of information that you didn't need but when I'm doing my tutorials I try to consider that some people haven't sewn before and so I try to get a little information for them and if you didn't need the information I hope that you knew that you could just skip ahead <laughs> okay so let me just get you a little closer while I'm sewing sorry for the movement of the camera just get you in here for a better view okay so we're going to line this up so that our needle comes down just above where this fabric is on top of there And I'm going to put my needle in needle down position if your machine doesn't have needle down position so that the needle stays down. Whenever you need to pivot, just make sure that you use your hand wheel and turn your needle, turn your hand, uh, <laughs> your hand knob toward you so that your needle goes into the down position before you pivot your fabric. And I'm going to turn the speed of my machine down. If you're not capable of turning the speed down on your machine, that's fine. Just press a little lighter as you go around the corner. And we're going to take about three or four stitches. And then we're going to reverse so that we can secure the stitches here. Because this is where... Uh, the, pro the eyeglasses will take the most wear and tear is on these edges where you're sewing them together. And we're going to sew all the way around. And as we come around to those corners, I'm just going to slowly sew and watch that my fabric is staying up against my guide or if you're using your mark on your plate you just want to gradually let this turn and go around the corner until I get it so that I'm straight again. Then I'll sew over to that next corner. And as I get to the next corner, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna slow down and I'm going to pivot and gradually, just a little at a time, turning my fabric, probably every couple of stitches, until I get where it's going straight again. And I'll sew all the way to the end of this piece of fabric, the top fabric. And then once again, I'm going to go in reverse about three, four stitches just to secure the stitches on this side. And I'm going to, whoops, sorry, didn't mean to hit the camera and make everybody dizzy. I'm just going to trim my threads while I'm right here and get those out of the way. set that aside for now and we'll do our next piece and we're going to do the same thing with this one we're just going to line the two pieces up hey I did better on cutting on this one what do you know 
I passed cutting on this one. <laughs> okay, and this is because I have the double-sided fusible, it's a little like tacky on this side, so I'll have to pay a little extra attention as I'm going through. But it should hopefully be fine. Oops. Wrong button! I hit the cut button. Okay, same thing on this side. We're going to start at the top of this top fabric. We're going to take three, four stitches. Then we'll go in reverse. To secure those stitches. And we're going to sew down until we come to the corner again. And we'll just do the same thing. We'll just slow down and ease around the corner. And then sew straight across till we get to the next corner. Using the smaller stitches helps as we're going around since they're smaller it'll help hold that corner a little better and we're back to being able to go straight again to the end of the top fabric and we'll go in reverse about three four stitches and then back forward and cut your thread. And I'm going to trim my threads while I'm right here. So the next thing that you're going to do is we want this cor these corners to look like corners when we get everything put to said and done and put together so we're going to do some clips on the corner and when we clip this we want to make sure that we probably do three clips you know like one about here one in the middle and one over to the side on each corner and we're going to do that on both pieces that we sewed and when you clip it you want to make very sure that you only clip up to your stitching, but don't go through your stitches. You don't want to cut your stitches when you do these clips. So we're just gonna be very careful. And if you use the end of your scissors, it's a little easier. If you, if you try to do it from down here, when you stop, you might actually go through. So it's a little bit better if you use the very end of your scissors these ones are really nice scissors. These are last year's um, limited edition um, Ginger scissors. They're super sharp. They're really wonderful. Th this is their, I believe, their embroidery set. And um, I just love, love, love them. These are the Evelyn's from last year. I have this year's, but I keep, I keep one set at my table and I keep another set over at my cutting table. They are so sharp. I just love them. And this year's, I don't know. They might be, uh, Seaside might be sold out of them. They might still have the 8-inch ones. I'm not sure. I don't think they have any more of the embroidery size ones. But the new set will be coming out um, this year in August. And if you don't have gingers, I really recommend... To get some gingers they are so sharp they are wonderful to use 
I used to buy cheap scissors many years ago, and I still do for cutting, batting, for cutting, all sorts of things, um, paper, whatnot. That's what I use my cheap scissors on. And I hide my gingers so that they don't get used for anything but my fabric and the things that they should be used for because I don't want them to get dull. And I don't want them to get messed up. So I have both kinds for different things. But I love, love, love my gingers. And I hide them so that nobody accidentally grabs them. I don't have children at home anymore. So the likelihood of that happening is slim to none. But you never know with a husband. Because he doesn't know the difference. Scissors are scissors to him. But he knows I have special scissors. So he usually asks. And I usually mark the, the ones that are usable for anything. So that he'll know. Okay, so the next part of this, not that you needed to know that whole story. Um, let me see. Okay, so fabric A. Is your print fabric. And this one, we're going to turn it right side out. And whether you use chopsticks or whatever you use, I like to use my little tool here to get my corners nice. We're just going to get those corners rounded out. And I usually run this across my seam on the inside. It just, for me, I think prepares it for when I'm going to finger press it. So if I run this along the seam, it just kind of gets that seam going. So when I go to finger press, I have a nice seam. So I'm hoping I catch that. I just run the tip of this across the seam. And it just helps my seam to lay flat. So now when I go to do my finger press, it's almost like they're all ready to do that. I'm going to check this corner again, see if I can get this a little more rounded. And I'm just going to finger press all across the bottom seam. You want it to match up. You don't want it to be overlapping. You want it nice and flat. And I'm just going to finger press that around. Let me double check this corner here. I feel like there's a piece. There we go. That's a little more rounded. Just finger press that all the way around. Okay. So now the next step. Let me see. We're going to place this piece inside of this piece. And we've already clipped our edges on the corner. And we're just going to get that set in there. So everything's nice and even. And I'm going to use clips to clip this around. And it didn't say anything about this piece. Oh my goodness, I forgot all about that. 
On fabric B, we were supposed to leave a three inch. I hope you're watching this tutorial before you make your item and not making it with me. We were supposed to leave a three inch opening at the bottom and I totally forgot that. So I'm just gonna take a couple stitches out. And you know, I did read my instructions before I started this and I knew that. But that's easily fixable. So now that I broke a couple stitches there, I'm just going to... Now if you watch this video ahead of time, which I hope you do, I like to watch the tutorial then make the item myself. But So we're going to leave about 3 inches open. So at the end, we're able to turn this because if I had not done that, that would not have been good. Okay. All right. So now we're going to stick this piece back in here. <laughs> we're going to get this lined up. And this is a new way of doing this for me too, so this will be interesting. So I'm going to take, and I'm going to use clips myself. If you want to use pins, that's totally fine. I like to use clips. Depending on the project. I have pins too that I use when I have to line up seams when I'm quilting and whatnot, but for stuff like this I just use clips. It's easier to go along and just stick a clip on there for me. But if you use pins, that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with using pins. So now I'm going to get these sides lined up here. And this might be the tricky part for you because we have to kind of open this up a little bit so that our two pieces here will meet. Because as you can see, this way it's folded over. And that won't be any good. This piece here is like folded over. So we kind of have to open this up a little bit. And we want to line up those pieces because we want to make sure that this get sewn. So I'm going to clip it right on that corner. And then I want to push this down in there. I left one piece of my instructions. That would not be good to use my instructions. So then, while you have this opened up, you're going to match up these so that they're at the same height as each other. And see, one has the seam sticking outside, of course, and one has the seam going on the inside. And I want to make sure that I have these lined up. And I hope that this is catching well in my video. And then we're just going to line it up going across, making sure that they're both on top of each other and get another clip on there and I'm going to put a couple of, I'm going to do an extra clip going around this just to make sure that I keep it lined up and when we get over to here you just want to scoot that inside fabric down and poke it in there and you want to get your seams so that they're going to be lined up and I'm going to put another Clip here. Now if you want to use a pin here so that you get your seams lined up perfectly, that's fine. So now, once again, I'm going to open this up some, you know, not open it, but kind of push it to the side because I'm wanting to line up 
these two edges right here on this corner. Okay. So now we're going to sew this baby together. We've got an opening down at the bottom, so we're all set. And this might be a little bit of the tricky part. Actually, I might put a pin over in this corner just so that I'm holding this down and matching up. I'm making sure that the two seams match up. And I'm just going to put a pin in there just as a safety measure for me. And I'm going to scoot this in. underneath my foot so I'm hoping that this is going to be seeable well on my video I'm going to line up my camera just a little bit okay I wanted to make sure I got my camera a little more lined up so that you'll be able to see what I'm doing here so I've got the back of my foot going in a little ways because I want to be able to sew. And I'm going to keep these two pieces matched up to each other. And I'm going to start my seam right on top of this seam here that's already been made. And I'm going to bring it forward just a little bit. I was holding on to it a little too tight there. And because I have that guide foot there, it's really going to help me when I bring my needle down to make sure that I'm staying at that quarter of an inch. And I'm going to make sure that my fabrics stay nice and flat. The back of my foot is inside of my glasses case. And I'm making sure that my fabric is nice and flat. And my seams are matched up. And the reason why I started a little bit inside is so that I can keep that quarter of an inch and I can seal up these two sides as I go. And we're going to sew out until we come around the corner again. And we're just going to go slow around the corner to try to get that half circle made until we get it straight. So over here I started just a little bit inside so if this was extended out you would see I started just a little bit inside of this because I'm going to come across this after and I'm going to be doing a quarter of an inch across and I'm going to re-clip that I took my clip out so I could get those together and start there but my clip would have been in the way of my sewing machine I'm just going to reclip that. And you just want to make sure your fabrics stay nice and lined up to each other. And I'm going to sew across here until we get over to this other side. get to that corner I'm going to slow down again and just ease around the corner and I'm going to take this clip out and this one too whoops sorry didn't mean to do ah shoot 
I keep hitting my darn camera. So I'm going to push this over again so that I'm laying this nice and flat as I come down through. And I'm going to catch this part here first. So I want to keep this nice and flat as I come down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that part first. Okay, and I'm quite a bit closer. So now I'm going to get this. I'm going to lift my foot up here so I can open this up some. And I want that seam on what will be the outside of my fabric going towards this way like I did on the other side. And I just want to check and make sure that this is laying nice and flat because I'm going to come in just a little bit onto that seam that I had done before, keeping my seams together. I'm just going to double check this to make sure that I'm going to have it lined up properly. Let me see. Actually, I'm going to change that. Your seam inside uh, your fabric, your fold over, I'm going to have it go towards the right. Because I'm seeing right now that that's going to work a little bit better. Let me see if this is going to show. Let me readjust this camera. Okay, because this is the part that I really want to make sure that you're being able to see. So I have this pushed open. But I want to make sure that my fabrics stay nice and flat when I go to sew. And I'm hoping that this is going to show up past my fingers. It looks like it is. So I have this nice and flat. And I'm going to stay doing that quarter of an inch. And I'm going to, my guide foot's going to be on this side where my fabric is folded to the right. And I'm checking things underneath to see how I'm doing to make sure I'm keeping everything nice and flat so I don't sew over at anything. And then I'll put my foot down. And I'm not going to sew too far into the inside, but about a quarter of an inch down from the edge of this. Whoops, sorry about that. That's the tricky part about getting your camera in there close enough so that people can see. And then I'm going to reverse about three, four stitches and come forward and then cut my thread. Okay, now that we've got that done, I'm going to lay this down like this. I want to keep my two fabrics lined up. I'm going to get this underneath my foot and I'm going to get my needle to drop down. So as you can see I've got this flat because I need to sew across the top a quarter of an inch. So I've got to get my needle to come down and I'm going to check this let me see, I need to hold onto my thread so that doesn't get sucked down in. So I'll stick this underneath my foot. And I'm just going to check and make sure now I need this at a, this edge at a quarter of an inch. I need everything flat that's underneath that foot. 
so I'm not sewing any bunches into it. And I want it to be lined up, so I'm going to start right where my seam is going in the other direction. I want to make sure my needle is going into that quarter of an inch. And it looks like I got it. And as you go across this front part, you just want to make sure that your fabric is staying nice and flat and even, not bunched up. And I'm going to secure those stitches. And so I'll get over to about where the clip is. And we're just going to fold this around. And we're just going to make sure that we keep everything nice and flat and smooth as we sew across that top. And this is probably the trickiest part of making the whole thing is getting this part sewed. Okay, and we're almost at the other side. So once again, I'm just going to pull this over. I'm going to line everything up. Make sure that this lays flat. So when I come this, when I'm coming this way, I need this piece right here to be nice and flat as I get up to this seam where I sewed the other two together. And I also want to check and make sure that everything up to my needle is nice and flat. And I'm going to sew right to that seam and stop. And I'm going to reverse about three, four stitches. And then I'm going to come forward until I hit that seam and I'll cut my thread. Okay. I'm going to trim those stitches and I'm going to adjust my camera. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim those stitches. Uh, not stitches, sorry. My threads. Just to clean it up a little bit. And there we go. So now is the ta-da moment, I hope. <laughs> We're going to push this through that opening down in the bottom. And just do it gently. And you just want to pull this through. Just go slow and gentle and ease that through. And just keep poking it a little bit at a time. Just takes a couple minutes. You don't want to rush it and rip your stitches or your fabric as you're pushing it through. And if I did this right, we'll have a glasses case. <laughs> If not, I will be redoing the tutorial. So let's see how this went. Okay, so once you pull it out, you're going to poke this down inside. But I'm gonna wait just a minute because I need that opening to fix my corners. And you know what? Okay, I do have it trimmed. 
So I just got to poke these corners out as well. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to get these ones over here. So just make sure you get all your corners poked around. There we go. So now you're going to, before we push this inside, now I still have this corner, we're going to fold this in and this piece in. Now you could hand stitch this if you want. This is going to be inside and not be noticeable. I'm going to tuck that thread in there out of my way. Same on this side. I'm just going to tuck those threads inside. And for me, this is going to be on the inside, so I'm not overly concerned about it because it will be on the inside. It's not going to be something that's out where you're going to see it. And we're going to seal up that hole. We're going to sew across. And I'm just going to start a little bit past the And we'll just do a little secure stitch, go back and forth. And we're just going to sew across that. Now secure this side. And we'll see how this works out. <laughs> I should have hand stitched it. We'll see. We'll find out once I get it poked in there. Now you might prefer to hand stitch that. That's totally up to you. I just feel like it's on the inside and we're not going to see it so I'm not overly worried about it. So I'm just going to poke this in, get this smoothed out, get my corners to match up, maybe. Let's see how I'm doing here. Now you might have to fidget with this a little bit so that it gets lined up well. And poke your fingers in there. And you just have to keep it, you know, adjusting it some. feel like this side's just a little bit too tight, but I'm just going to pull on it a little bit and stretch that just a little bit so it flattens out more. Now once you get it all adjusted, the way that you want it. Now there is an optional feature that you could, if you want, take a piece of Velcro and put a small, you know, maybe two inch, one two inch um, piece of Velcro here and a piece of Velcro here. So when you fold this over, you could just stick it together with the Velcro. And you'd just have to Put your, maybe put your glasses in and make a mark where you want to put your Velcro. But that's kind of cute. I think that's kind of cute. I like the Seuss fabric. 
And it's a perfect size for you glasses. So I'm just going to double check this piece here because I just didn't like how it was laying down. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And I am going to press this. And since I have had a double fusible, as I press this, it's going to fuse, the inside fabric is going to fuse to the outside fabric. And I was kind of thinking that I like that idea. So I'm just going to let my iron go inside as well. And let that fuse together. And then I'm going to flip it. And I'm just going to check to make sure that my two edges match up. You know, so that they're lined up like that. And I'm going to finger press it across. And do that all the way across that top. And then I'm going to lay it down and I'm going to press it. And I'm going to let the iron go all the way to the inside, to the seam at the bottom. Because with that, you know, where I use the double-sided fusible instead of single-sided, that's going to fuse my pieces together. And it's up to you. You can use single-sided fusible if you want, or you can use the double-sided fusible like I did. <coughs> Excuse me. But I like the double-sided because I know that that's going to, for me, I think it's going to sturdy that up more and keep my fabrics together. So if I chuck this into the laundry, then it's not going to, you know... The fabrics aren't going to separate. I'm just going to do that top just a little bit more. And I'm just going to let it sit and cool down so I don't get puckers when I fold it. Because if I fold it now while it's warm, then I'll get little puckers in the, in the top of this area. So I'm just going to let that cool down and set. I think that's pretty cute. All right. Well, that's our glasses case. And that was using the, there we go. Um, that's using the Robert Kaufman glasses case pattern. Um, the Dr. Seuss fabric. If you would like a little kit of this, uh, doesn't have to be this fabric. I think this is really cute, especially if you have a child who wears glasses. This would be wonderful for them. I'm sure they would enjoy this fabric. But if you're making it for yourself and you want something um, a little different, just contact Seaside Quilting Supplies and they can set you up with a little kit. You can get the pattern from them with the Kaufman fabric, there's many different Kaufman fabrics that you can get from boutiques to kitchen fabrics. Pretty sure you wouldn't want kitchen fabrics, but you might um, for a glasses case. But they have all kinds of different fabrics. And if you purchase the kit from them, you can get the pattern with it. Alrighty. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. This was Seaside Quilting Tutorials. My name is Terry. If you've enjoyed the video, if you feel that it's been helpful for you, please stop and like the video and subscribe to Seaside Quilting Supplies. Uh, as we bring out more tutorials, we're going to be doing some bags this month and uh, some paper piecing and we have another block coming for our sampler quilt. Uh, I think in a couple weeks or maybe a little less in a couple weeks. And if you click on that little bell next to subscribe and set it to all, whenever we put out a video for an item, a tutorial, it will notify you. And we're going to be doing some hello pouches 
many different projects coming up. So if you would like a kit, just let us know. We're over on Facebook. You can find us over there. And I hope you enjoy your evening. Happy sewing. <laughs>